The following episode of Dad vs. Daughter was made possible by a contribution from Cosmos. Emotep, a new dynasty, is the first expansion for Emotep the base game. Now, this adds all new boards and a few other little odds and ends. So, if you want to learn how to play Emotep, check out our video on that. Uh, but what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to go over what is the new stuff that we have, and then I'm going to tell you what Dad and his lunch group think, because we've been playing this a lot. So, check it out. See this nice play mat here? Yeah, that doesn't come with the game. That's an add-on that you can buy from Cosmos. Uh, I don't know if you can get it off of their website directly, but I do know that they are uh, planning on having those available for sale at any conventions that they're at. So it's really nice neoprene. Um, definitely not needed, but as you can see, that really adds table presence to the game. We have spots for each of the colors, stones, the market cards, the boat cards and the boats themselves, as well as a score track that goes from zero to 40 around the outside edge. So let's talk about the new boards because that's really the heart of this expansion. In this video, I'm not gonna talk about how Emotep uh, plays as far as the rules and all that because you can go check out our other video on the base game. Uh, but what I will do is I'm gonna cover both of the new side C and side D of all of the different boards that we do get. So starting at the top, we have our luxury market. Now this looks just like our normal market, except we have gold coins that are in between each one of the card spaces. Now each player is going to start with two gold coins and those aren't gonna be worth anything at the end of the game. But what you can do is twice per turn, since you do have two of those, is you will be able to buy cards that are adjacent to each other by spending one of those tokens. So let's just say that I wanted to get both of these green cards. So when I go there, I could take this pyramid decoration and then I could give up one of my gold coins and I could take either the stone ornament card or the entrance card because they each have a spot between those. Now, anyone else that comes to the market uh, they can do the same thing, but the market cards don't refill until the end of the turn. So conceivably, they could run out of cards before all players are able to take some. So there's a close-up of what that market tile looks like for the seaside. Next, we have the Temple of Ra, and it will tell you right here, you assess points at the end of each round. Earn one of the bonuses for each stone that is visible from above. So this is very similar to the base game, but you'll notice over here that as we're stacking our stones, whatever we see looking down from the top, they're going to get these bonuses. Either two victory points or four of their stones. They're going to be able to draw three of the market cards, and they're going to pick one. Or over here, again, you can get two victory points or four stones. Next, we have the burial chamber. This is the burial mound. And you'll see that it says assess points at the end of the game. And you're going to get a number of the connect stones times the number of levels. So what we're going to do is we're going to be building this up in a pyramid. And we want our stones to touch. Now we can only do a max of four. So let's say that we had six connected. And we had uh, four levels of our pyramid that our stones were in. That would be six times four or 24 points. And you'll also notice we're gonna get uh, each additional stone earns one point because once our pyramid is all the way built and we only have one stone at the top, then we're gonna start unloading uh, stones just to the board directly. Here is the obelisks or the great obelisk. Now this one I think is really kind of fun because as you're placing stones along here, you're gonna be collecting these uh, polynominoes uh, or poly polyominoes, I guess that's what it's called. Uh, I like to call them Tetris pieces, and you are going to be placing those on your board. Now, uh, we're each going to get a little card. Now, these are really small cards. They're the same size as the boat and the market cards, but you can see that we have a base of three. So what we're going to be doing is as we take these uh, Tetris pieces, we're going to be placing them on our board like this. Now, we have to make sure that we build out so we don't have any gaps. So you're gonna to wanna to start building and filling in your rows, just like Tetris. You can see it says we're gonna assess points at the end of the game. You're gonna earn two points per completed row, and there's gonna be a bonus for the players with the most completed rows, and that's gonna depend on your player count. 
And then once this is all filled up, each additional stone we have is gonna earn us one point. And then finally, we have the pyramid scaffold. So this says assess points immediately when placing the stone. So you're gonna see we're gonna have a place for these scaffoldings. Uh, we're gonna take one of these out randomly. So we're gonna have four, and I'll just place this board down here so you can kind of see how this is gonna work. We're gonna put those four uh, scaffolds there, and then we are going to flip one over. So you can see when we offload our stones, we're gonna be getting these immediately. So here, this will give us one point and two of our stones, two victory points. We're gonna be able to get a market card and two victory points. Now you'll notice that there are a bunch of different ones of these. So a lot of different uh, things that we're gonna be able to do and the, the different combinations that we have of those. But you'll notice down here it says, in addition, the player with the most stones when the token is full receives three points and one point for each in the case of a tie. And then each additional stone earns one point because it could be that you're going to fill up all of those uh, scaffolds and they're gonna be built on top of each other in a 3D effect. So that's gonna look pretty nice. So that is the new C side. So let's flip them over and take a look at side D. So here we have our D side, and you can tell they look a little bit different, um, and especially the market, because now we have the black market. And you can tell it looks kind of like it's at night. You've kind of got um, you know, the lamps on or the lights in the stalls and such. And you'll notice we have two stacks here that are turned face down. Now there's three cards in that stack. So when we go there, we can take either one of the face-up cards, or depending on how many stones, we could take more. Uh, but we can also look in one of these stacks of cards. So we're gonna look at these cards and then we're going to, after we pick one, we're gonna place those back. And then anyone else that comes here can either take whatever is remaining and look at those and, and choose one of those, or they could choose from the other stack or the face-up cards if they're still available. Then at the end of the turn, whatever face-up cards are left, just like normal, those are going to be discarded, and then we'll replace those. However, the face-down stacks, we will replenish those back so that there's three in each of those stacks. Next, we have one of my personal favorites. This is the Temple Arena. Now, when we place our stones here, we are going to be able to move our little, they look like uh, chariots. You'll see when we place our stones, we're gonna be able to move our chariot that many spaces. So if I place a stone there, I'm gonna be able to move my chariot from the start to the one space. And then uh, at the end of each round, we're gonna assess points. Now it's gonna score based on a player count here. In a three or four player game, if you are in the lead at the end of the round, you're gonna get two points. If you're in second place, you're gonna get one. And in a two-player game, you're going to get two points, and the second place gets zero. But then at the end of the game, what you're going to do is you're going to assess points based on where your chariot is at here. So if I end my turn here on the eight, I'm going to also get eight victory points as well. And when you are moving your chariot around the board, so let's just say that the gray is on three, and the black was on two. And let's just say that when they place their stone, they're covering up the uh, two spot here. They would go one, two. Now you can't stop on that, so they actually get to jump over them and end their turn there. Next, we have the burial chamber tomb, and you'll notice we have uh, tokens here with numbers. So there's 24 of these, and we're gonna have them face down and shuffled up. And at the beginning of each round, we're gonna put four of these out. Now, uh, the first player here gets to choose which one of these uh, tiles they want to put their stone on. So let's just say that uh, white came here and the white wanted to put their stone on nine. So they do that. Gray comes and they decide to put their stone on 21. Now, if no one else comes there, then those numbers are discarded. And what you want to do is you want to try to get your colored cubes next to each other. So gray is going to want to try to build out like this, just as long as they're, they're touching. And this can be quite tricky because you don't know what numbers are going to come up and you don't know which order you're going to be unloading the boat from. So in this case, 
uh, at the end of the game, we're going to assess points. Now, they would both get, because they have three that are touching, they would both get six points. And then you also get one point per stone uh, without the token present. So if you happen to go there and uh, there's no tokens that are left, then you would be able to get one point for that. Next, we have our Obelisk Alley. Now, when you unload stones here, you're gonna pick one of these empty spots and you're gonna start building your obelisk. Now, it'll tell you a height of two you're, is gonna get you four points and then you go all the way up to a height of six so you're gonna get 18 points. So once you start placing your stones here, then you're going to keep placing stones to uh, finish that obelisk. And then once it's done, if there are any more open spots, then you can start building there. And at the end of the game, if you succeeded in building the required height, then you're gonna get those points. And it'll tell you you're going to assess points at the end of the game. Incomplete obelisks are going to give you one point per stone. And then each additional stone here is going to get you one point because it could be such the case that you come and you can't uh, start or place your stones on any. So you'll get that extra point. And then finally, we have the pyramid corridor. Here it says we're going to assess points immediately when placing the stone. And then Emotep, who is our little mummy guy there, uh, he's going to move zero or one space whenever a player takes new stones from the quarry and then each additional stone is going to get you one point So if this fills up and stones keep getting delivered here, you're still going to get one point But what we do is we like to start Imhotep there on the four and you're going to start placing stones in front of where he's at Now when you place those stones, you are going to get the points uh, that your stone is placed on However, when someone does take new stones from the quarry and they decide to either move him zero or one space, then he's going to go uh, to the next available spot. So you can see as, you're, as Imhotep is moving around here, uh, you're going to have some blank spaces. So those could eventually fill up as you keep uh, placing your stones there. Now the final thing I want to talk about are the prophecy cards. Now we have quite a few of these, as you can see. We're going to pick, we're going to shuffle these up, and then we're going to pick three to start the game. And you'll notice they're pretty much all the same as far as uh, they all have spots for the different rounds. So I'm just going to show you this one here. This is the Prophecy of Seth, and it says at least four statue cards in purple. So this is what you're going to want to have at the end. So if you have at least four statue cards, and you, in, during the first round, you placed one of your scarabs here, so this marks what you're doing, what you're prophesizing. So you would put your scarab here during rounds one or two, and if you were correct, you're going to get seven points at the end of the game. If you don't have at least four, then you're going to lose three points. Now, if you did the prophecy in rounds three and four, you'll notice that the points that you get or lose have decreased. In this case, you would get plus three, or you would lose minus two. And if you did it in the rounds five or six, you would still get plus three, but you'd only lose one point. So uh, you are rewarded earlier in the game that you make that decision. Um, and I'll talk more about these in our review. So now that I've showed you what is new on both the C and the D side, let's get to what dad and his lunch group think of the game. Uh, first off, let me just say, like I said, you don't need this mat. However, I love the presence that it gives to the table when you put the, uh, the, the tiles out and have all your stones out there. It, it just looks really cool. Uh, I think they're selling it for like 20 bucks. So uh, if you are like me and you kind of like to bling your games out a little bit, uh, I definitely like this. It does roll up and fits inside the box just fine. So uh, I would recommend getting that if uh, you like, like I said, to bling your games out. So now let's talk about what we like. Uh, both C and D side, I really like what the new options are as far as how we're playing the game. And my lunch group feels the same way. I don't know that I can actually say that I like any sides better than the others. Uh, I do like the fact that now we have four options and you can mix and match, you know, between the A and the B and the C and the D as far as which ones that you want to put out there. So, you know, you could have the D side for the black market 
Uh, but you could have the A side for the temple and the B side for the burial chamber, you know, that sort of thing. So I do like that option, which to me really adds uh, the variability and replayability to the game. Uh, like I said, some of these new ones, I, I really enjoy the temple arena. Uh, it seems like every game I've played, I have gone there and I've racked up pretty good points because I've always made sure that I am in the lead. So I'm getting two points every round for that. And then I generally finish pretty high. Now I've never finished at the 10 at the actual end, uh, but I've usually finished around the eight or nine mark. And I do want to show that if you do not uh, get off this starting spot, even if you just move one space and get to the where the zero bonus points are at the end, uh, but if you're stuck there, you're going to lose four points at the end of the game. So that gives everybody an incentive to go there. And I've played many games where some players kind of ignored that and they ended up losing four points. The new way to do the obelisk with the uh, Tetris pieces and even the stack, I think, is really kind of cool. Uh, probably like the Tetris style pieces, that side maybe a little bit better, but it's still an awful lot of fun. And then with the uh, pyramid corridor part here, you can really kind of mess with people as you're taking stones and you're either moving or not moving uh, Emotep. So even if you are not uh, going to that spot, then you can still kind of influence points that other players are getting. So overall, this has really been a hit with my group. In fact, uh, one of our members used to own uh, Emotep, the base game, and they just weren't getting it to the table and he sold it off. And then once we started playing this again at lunch, he realized how much he really liked the game and kind of regretted uh, selling it off and was thinking about even uh, repurchasing. But this expansion, I think, is uh, it's not needed, but if you're playing Emotep a lot, I highly recommend it because of the variability that it's going to give you. Just having the new boards is kind of a, uh, a breath of fresh air into it, especially if you've played Emotep a lot. So like I said, really, we really like the C side and the D side, what they uh, add to the game. So now let's talk about what we don't like. Um, these prophecy cards. Now, even the rules will say that you can choose to leave those in uh, or put them in or leave them out. We've played with these a couple of times. Um, we've not really cared for them too much. I mean, yeah, it is kind of neat, but it is an action that you're taking in order to uh, make your prophecy. And if you're not doing it that early enough in the game, then you're only getting, you know, three points uh, on some of these. So, um, that was really the only thing we didn't care about, but everything else we have really enjoyed. Um, we have been playing this a ton. And if you follow our Facebook page, uh, you've seen pictures from our lunch sessions. So, uh, like I said, if you like Emotep, then I highly recommend that you pick up this expansion. I think it's only like, uh, right around 20 bucks might even be a little bit less. So definitely kind of a no brainer. Uh, the quality on the pieces is the same as what you'd expect. The little wooden uh, Emotep guy there. The little chariots, I think, are really kind of cool. Um, there are some new market cards. I know I didn't show those, but adds a little bit more variability to the game. You know, I do like the, uh, the planks that we've got, adding the 3D effect there. And when we're building um, the pyramid or building the burial mound, um, having the, that 3D effect looks pretty cool. And then I also mentioned, you know, the um, uh, Tetris style pieces. These are pretty neat and adds a lot of enjoyment to the game. So that is Emotep, a new dynasty. Like I said, Dad and his lunch group highly recommend it. And we will catch you guys next time. If you would like to support us, you can visit patreon.com slash dadvdaughter. Like and follow us on Facebook to stay current on our show schedule, sneak peeks at future shows, and to interact with us.